plus 2w equals 0. That's the same equation as, you know, v plus u plus v plus w equals 0. If I multiply this by any non-zero scalar, I'll get the same equation. Yeah. So to get something fundamentally different, I'd have to go like 1, 2, 1, or negative 1, 1, 1. I'd need a different combination of numbers. Find a non-zero linear combination of your three vectors and that add to the zero vector. So we basically just already answered that question. What's the difference between those two questions? Find a non-zero vector, add these vectors, it will still be dependent. Find a non-zero combination of your three vectors and probably three that will add to the zero vector. So question four. Look, we found one right here. Okay. One, one, one. Find a non zero linear combination of three vectors in column three that add to the non zero vector. When you read those two, um, what's the differences in those? I'm getting hung up on the wording. It seems like the same question to me. Oh, is what they're looking for. So the first one is find is the answer to the number three is a vector. Okay. Well, there's a lot of vectors, but um, now number four says given the vector you chose, what is the particular linear combination that hits zero? Okay. Um, and basically the answer is you know kind of the one that I picked right here to get in the first place. Okay. So I actually picked a linear combination of two vectors and a third one I would choose later. To, to hit, I intentionally hit zero with it. Okay. And then I said, ah, this is what the W that would need to be to make this one equal zero. So in, cho in choosing W, the way I went about it, I already had the combination that hit zero. Okay. So I kind of answered question four on my way to number three. Okay, cool. Um, find a set of three vectors that use at least one of the vector, at least one of the above vectors that are linearly independent. Wow, this is, test is going to change a lot depending on if you thought they were independent or dependent. <laughs> you're getting a 20 or you're getting a 100. <laughs> so, use both. so we thought they were independent. So we're using both. We want to find a third that would be independent. Okay. So we definitely want to choose W that we just got. That would be the exact wrong answer for this question. Okay. Two, three. Then we got U, V, W. I don't use the letter X for a vector. I don't really want to reuse W. What's before U in the alphabet? T. T? That's a bad letter for a vector, too. F. There's not many other good ones. S, is S and T are parameters. B for bad vector. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just find a new U, B. We'll just find a new W. W such that U, V, W are lin independent. Lin in depth. All right, so. I need C1, U plus C2, V plus C3, W equals zero. That's one way to go about it. Um, and I want the only solution to be zero, zero, zero. I want the only solution to be C1 is the same as C2 is the same as C3, and they're all zero. So I could line them up. Now, I don't know much about W other than it has three dimensions. So I could line them up in a matrix, but I'm going to have to give W uh, some coordinates. Uh, I can call it a, maybe X, Y, Z, and then choose uh, X, Y, Z so that it's independent. Is that 
earphone. Just want to make sure the recording is not at some point it runs out of memory and it doesn't make the biggest deal about it and just kind of stops. But I think we should both all stop it after this problem. Uh, so is it this, still going? Yeah. This would be a way to do it, but not the best way. So I could uh, let the only thing I know get again, only thing I know about W is it's got three coordinates. So I'm gonna let W clock the vector X, Y, Z, and I could line up the uh, you know this right here in matrix form. It's a little weird to see variables inside your matrix. Um, so this would be one way to line it up. Yeah. And the problem with this is there's so many choices it can almost feel overwhelming. Um, I Even just starting off clearing out um, row two and three, I'm gonna have X's hanging out all over the place here. So this is a inefficient way to solve it. Okay. Because you're gonna have you're gonna have to pick x, y, and z combinations. So this is inefficient. And this might be totally off, but can we do something stupid like negative four? Yeah, you can pick. So you're gonna be able to pick two of the three, right? Like, can you write it out like this? Make this negative four, this positive two, and this negative four. You can try it. Totally you can you can guess that. and check. You can certainly guess and check. I would guess something like zero zero one. Okay. I I would try the easy way out first before I would uh try to be a hero and go with uh, things that are like more complicated. But you can't look at it going this way to equal zero. Well, remember this is where it comes from. So your let's. Let's do this a geometric way instead. Okay. Uh, we're going to jump way back to the first page. So we have u and v right here. If I do a cross product, I get a vector perpendicular. Mm -hmm. And two of them span a plane. What I want to do is get a third vector that doesn't live on this plane. The normal vector doesn't live on that plane. Okay. That's the quick and easy answer to an independent vector. Okay. So I'm just going to go with the third uh, the third vector as that normal vector. We're going to try w equals the normal that we computed, which was negative 2, negative 2, 2. And again, we had that that would make it normal, uv, uh, cross product to get n, that's normal. Now, if we were in four dimensions, this would be a much tougher problem because we don't have the uh, amazing cross product in four dimensions. We'd pretty much be working here and kind of guessing and checking and doing our best. Okay. All right, so when I say try w, I'm going, as the normal, I'm going to put a negative 2, negative 2, 2 in here and see what solution do we get. So we're going to knock out column one first. So I need two row ones here and then negative three row ones here. We're using that one and knocking out everything else. So we have zero, six plus zero is six, negative four. Minus 2 is negative 6, and negative 0. Negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. Negative positive 6 plus 2 is another 8. Right? Eight. Okay. It would be surprising if we got a free variable okay. here. That's what we're hoping we don't get. Um, so multiply by negative 1 sixth. Multiple, or by positive one six multiplied by negative one eighth. So we get 
one, negative one. Down here we get one, negative one. This is not good. Something's not right. P-naught instead of N. I sure did. <laughs> so, we rewind in time. I had this combination in my head. What I needed to do was this one here. Yeah. So, so what happened? So the next step, show what this Well, this is good. This what shows me what I don't want to do on the test. I so, like that. minus, did this on purpose, minus a uh, row two. All right, one, three, negative two, zero, zero, one, negative one, zero, 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 zero. So we got a free one, which means when you're you know, operating, what we have here is three, we have a non-trivial solution. So I'd normally say, so we have our C1 column, C2, C3. C3 is free. Let C3 equal one, for example. If everything we did is correct up to here, what this means is C3 is 1. We'll be able to go and figure out what C2 and C1 are uh, based off of this. And we'll have a non-trivial solution. I don't have to go back and find C2 and C1 because I know it's non-trivial solution because here's one of them that's not 0. A non-trivial solution means there's at least one uh, coefficient that's not 0. And here's... One coefficient that's not zero. And where do you get one off of there? I picked it. I just picked it. Okay. The only bad number to choose would be let C3 equal zero. Okay. Because that may come back and have the other two be zero also. Okay. So I could easily go and plug it in. I see that C2 minus C3 equals zero. So C2 is equal to C3, which is one. And then jumping way up to number one, or equation one, I should say, we have C1 plus 3C2 minus 2C3 equals zero. Plugging in one and one, we have C1 plus 3 minus 2 equals zero. 3 minus 2 is 1, so C1 equals negative 1. So there's our linear combination, negative 1, 1, 1 that would give us zero. So I picked one that was in the span. Now, why did I pick one that was in this? Well, I made a mistake, but why is that particular one in the span? Where did I get P0? What, what was P0? P0 is the point on the... It was already in the span. Yeah. So I picked a point that we purposely computed in the span. So I picked a really bad... I picked a vector that was in the span. Or if I should say a point that's in the span. And so, can we run through how... So is that a right answer or the wrong answer? It's a wrong answer. Okay, cool. So we picked a, uh, a vector that was uh, that made this set dependent. So I'm totally okay with that because then if I get to that point, I know I did something wrong. Yeah, so, so, I'm, I'm so cool this is that. linearly dependent. Okay. So this is not the answer. It's not the correct answer number five. Okay, cool.